Hi, I'm Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of today's newsletter is going to be using dating skills to get a job. Well, I've got an email success story from a guy who used what he learned in 3% Man, as well as Mastering Yourself, my second book, to get a job. It's really interesting. He went to, after the lockdowns ended in his country, he went to a job fair which was kind of similar to a speed dating event. And so he did a great job of using scarcity. He was looking good, feeling good. Obviously, he's fit. He's in great shape. And he created the conditions where these potential employers started getting worried that one of the other employers would hire him first. So it's a great way to use the things that if you're looking for a job or maybe you're looking for investors in your startup or just people to be friends with. When you create the perception that you're highly sought after individual, whether it's a romantic prospect or it's something to do with your professional life, other people see you as being more high value than everybody else that you may be competing against. And so I thought it was a great success story of how, because I've mentioned this in 3% Man, it's like these, the stuff that's in here is not just about dating, pickup skills, relationship skills. It's about being a man, being self-reliant and creating the conditions where you can make your life and lifestyle revolve around what you want to do for a living. And so this guy did a great job of that. So I got a quote that I wrote and then we'll go through his email. And the quote says, scarcity creates value when potential employers, friends, investors, and romantic prospects have the perception that you are highly desired and have lots of options, they will make more of an effort to convince you to choose them over all the other, other prospects. High achievers are rare as most people are average and settle for less than they are capable of having. Never get attached to anyone or anything that doesn't appreciate, celebrate, and recognize your value. If you seek, you will find. When you are in professional or personal situations that are not ideal, keep prospecting and looking for better opportunities to maximize your happiness and potential. Having choices and options always makes you feel better about yourself and others feel better about choosing you. So let's go through his email. He says, hey coach, I hope all is well. I'm writing in to tell you about a success story that is also interesting because of the parallels and overlaps between the dating and professional worlds. To start, I'm on my 12th read of 3% Man and my first read of Mastering Yourself. You write books faster than I can read them. I'm looking forward to ordering your third book soon. Well, what's interesting is I first wrote 3% Man back in 2006. That was the original first edition. And then in 2016, when I did the audio book, I completely updated it to match the second edition that came out in 2013. Plus, I had a lot of content just on the fly in the studio. And obviously, that updated content made its way into the current edition of 3% Man. And so a lot of these techniques that he used are going to be also in mastering yourself and you can read both these books for free at understandingrelationships.com just subscribe to the email newsletter because I, I talk about how in the book how you create the conditions obviously a lot of stuff to go into and I'm not going to go into it all in the video but how to create the conditions where you're perceived as being like the superstar free agent whether it's NBA basketball or Major League Baseball or football where you have these wealthy billionaire guys that hop on their private planes and they all go visit these sports stars after their maybe their rookie deals are up or maybe when their second or third deal is up and they're thinking about changing franchises. And because they're so sought after and everybody wants to have the best players on their team, you got these guys that are billionaires that will fly halfway around the country or the world, wherever these guys happen to be vacationing, to meet with them. And it's just because scarcity creates value because there's only a handful of these really great superstar free agent type athletes available in the off season every year. And so you can create that perception, even though you're just a regular average guy, that you'll create whether it's women you want to date 
or friends that want to hang out with you or investors to invest in your startup or your company or people to simply hire you for a job like this particular guy did. And when you're perceived as being that superstar, everybody's going to fight for your attention. In other words, they'll offer you more money. They'll offer you jobs in the spot as opposed to, oh, we'll get back to you kind of thing. So, and then obviously my third book, Mastering Yourself, I'm uh, not Mastering Yourself, uh, Quotes, Ruminations, and Contemplations, which is now out in Audible, paperback, hardcover on Amazon. It's kind of funny. He says, I write books faster than you can read them. It's, you know, I wrote this book back originally in 2016 and Mastering Yourself came out in 2018, my second book. And people are complaining, when are you going to write another book? When are you going to write another book? And then Mastering Yourself is at... It's almost, I think it's like 650 pages, almost 700 pages. And then people were complaining it was too long. So they're complaining first that I didn't have enough books out. And then I make a really long book with a lot of information in it. And they complain that it's too long. Typically, the people who complain are the low achievers, the people that are looking to cherry pick, that aren't really going to make the effort to reach their full potential. So anyways, I digress. Back to our regularly scheduled email. He says, so I'm quite familiar with your dating discipline and thus have been focusing on the life and purpose and professional realm lately. When I first came across your work two years ago, I was working with different philanthropic organizations as my degree is in the social sciences. I'm 30 years old, but in my late teens and early 20s, I worked in different industries as an hourly worker. When the pandemic hit and hiring concentrated on essential services, I went back into the food industry to lend my community a helping hand, refusing to accept the fear mongering and succumb to house arrest like the rest. Yeah, it was a lot of fun being imprisoned in your own home. And if you guys have seen the Fauci emails that just came out, and like it's amazing, like a year ago when you would mention that the virus was came from a lab. You were called a racist, you were banned from social media, you were ostracized, a conspiracy theorist. And some of these emails, it's pretty obvious that the people around Fauci were all like, hey, we looked at this virus and this is not a natural thing. But yet this guy went and testified in congressional testimony that it was just something that came from a, a wet market. That dude should be locked up in prison for the rest of his life for crimes against humanity. But back to our email. I realized during this time that I missed working like with like-minded coworkers and did not miss at all the merit, meritocratic college grads with master degrees whom I'd worked with since graduation. So now that things are returning to normal, I've decided that I want to stick to customer service while I get certified as a physical therapist and do my own philanthropic projects on the side without the annoying snowflakes. <laughs> it's like a college education these days is a lot of uneducating you instead of educating you. The reality with college, you should only go to college if it's going to help you get a job that's going to pay you well. There's way too many people graduating with absolutely useless degrees and then there's six figures in debt and then they end up waiting tables because they can't get a job because they went and got a a useless degree. So I decided to take advantage of the gigantic hiring sprees we're seeing everywhere. It seems people aren't motivated to get back to work, which only creates more opportunities for those like me who are 100% ready and prepared to get back out there. Well, I know down here in South Florida, there are several restaurants that have been closed because with all the employment benefits, they're paying them more than that than they would earn. And it's good for them you can understand why would you go back to work when you're going to be earning less money than you would on unemployment. But obviously we're seeing food appreciate and skyrocket because employers are having to pay more because the you've got an artificial inflation in the labor market now because you have fewer people willing to work because, quite frankly, they make more money on unemployment than they do work in the jobs that they once had. So everybody's talking about inflation and it's not across everything, but certain sectors of the economy, I'm sure everybody's really loving the gas prices going through the roof. 
doesn't affect me personally, but all those middle class people that voted for Dementia Joe, that's a pretty big tax. But hey, no refunds. You got what you voted for. I went to a job fair at a local mall as they're exciting and fun places to work. Plus, as I'm recently single, I also thought it'd be a great place to meet potential prospects. Lots of women like to go to the malls. So I showed up to the job fair and found that the layout was similar to speed dating. Circular tables set up next to each other. They'll call you later if they're interested, etc. I first went to a sporting goods store as I love the outdoors with a passion. Camping, kayaking, hiking, I love it all. I dressed well and I've been going to the gym so I felt good and looked good, exemplifying an alpha physiology. Remember, thinking of yourself as that highly sought after sports free agent. You give off that vibe, people are going to sense it. They're going to notice it. And it will make you stand out from all the other average people that you may be competing against. The, the 97 percenters, if you will. The main interviewer, who was the store manager, was this beautiful bombshell. Blonde highlights, blue eyes, light skin, thick but not fat, charismatic and confident. I could tell she was a total alpha female. The majority of time speaking was spent by her. I thought I'd use the principle of asking questions as if we were on a date. Well, remember, in any conversation, whether you're talking to investors, friends, romantic prospects, whoever's asking the questions is the person that is running and leading the conversation. I got this girl talking so much, coach, that she was basically telling me her entire life story. Because in reality, we all love to talk about ourselves. Our favorite people in the world is us. We love to talk about us. And when we rarely encounter somebody who actually wants to know about us, it causes us to feel more rapport with them. Like, wow, because when you ask questions, personal questions about somebody, you're not behaving as somebody who wants a job or wants their money, or to date them, you're giving off the vibe of somebody they already know and they feel close to. That's why it causes everybody to drop their guard and feel like, wow, I really like this person. They like you because you're getting them to talk about themselves. And when was the last time you met a total stranger who actually wanted to listen to something that you had to say? Something to think about. Highly recommend Dale Carnegie's How to Win Friends and Influence People. I think we should be teaching that to kindergartners. I did my best to keep a straight face, but in my mind, I was laughing my ass off because I couldn't believe how effective it was working. A few times during the interview, she snapped out of it as if she realized, hey, I'm supposed to be asking the questions here. We wrapped up and she told me she'd call me if they're interested. So I went along and I spoke to two or three other companies. So when you got multiple companies there... Your whole mindset's going to be different because there's a lot of prospects. So you're, you can't, you're not begging somebody for a job. You're, you're, you have the vibe of which is the best place for me. Who's going to offer me the most? And it puts you in a much more powerful position. It's a lot easier to give off that alpha vibe that you're a high achiever. You're highly sought after. As I was getting ready to leave, the other interviewer from the first store asked me if they could speak with me again. So I went back and the hottie asked me to go in for a one-on-one interview a few days later. Long story short, I got the job and I'm excited to start. You see that? All he did was take the time to ask this. Instead of, hey, I want the job, he's asking this woman personal questions, getting to know her as a human being. That's going to cause her or a guy, if it was a guy, to like him. Because we all want to work with people that we like. And if somebody takes the time to just to get to know you instead of begging for a job or begging for a date or begging for an investment in their company, they, they in essence, will be trying to convince you why you should be with them or choose them, choose their company, allow them to invest in your company, choose them to go on a date with. It completely flips the script. Just like dating, if you make a good impression at a job interview and move along as if you have several options, it creates scarcity in the mind of the employer as they don't want to potentially lose you to someone else. Best of luck to all the three percenters out there getting back into the workforce. Hope this helps. 
So I do a lot of coaching with a lot of high-level executives, people in Silicon Valley, Fortune 500 companies, especially when they – a lot of times people will – when especially in the corporate world, when they're trying to climb the ladder, they run into the corporate bureaucracy and sometimes they get stuck there. And they're told to be patient, wait for an opening, something will open up. And what I, one of the things I always coach these – people guys and girls both to do when they're in these situations is if you kind of hit the glass ceiling stay at your job stay busting your ass but in the background you should always be prospecting because if somebody's not willing to give you what you want right now and you're hungry for it and you don't want to wait because time is going to pass regardless and you want to get to where you want to be as quickly as possible and you're not satisfied with being stuck indefinitely, whether it's months or years, to where you can move up the rung to the next rung in the ladder in the corporate world, you want to be out there prospecting and talking to other employers. And because the goal is you're trying as a as a man, you're trying to achieve your outcome, which is to improve your income, to improve your working conditions, and to improve your ability to grow and to learn and maximize your potential. And so if your current employer is not willing to give you what you want and you've kind of hit the glass ceiling, maybe you're running into a bureaucracy, maybe you got people over you that got seniority and they're not as good as you, you don't have to sit there and take that. You're in charge of your career. It's just like people that complain, oh, we, I need the government to make my employer pay me $15 an hour or whatever, or $20 an hour. It's like if you're not happy with what you're getting, it's up to you. You are your own free agent representative. And therefore, if somebody's not willing to give you what you want, in the background, you should be looking on your spare time for somebody who will. And so one of two things will happen. You'll either find a better opportunity or when you're in the process of finding that better opportunity, maybe your current employer, maybe something opens up. Either way... Success is making progress. If you're just stuck there and nothing is moving in the company that you're at, you're not going to feel like you're making progress. You're not going to feel like you're very successful. And so the goal is to always be moving forward. Hey, if these guys don't recognize my value, if they're not willing to pay me what I feel I'm worth, I'm going to go find it from somewhere else. I'm not going to wait for a freaking handout or some lying jerk-off politician to force my employer to pay me more or artificially change or influence the labor market. I'm just going to go find somebody that's willing to pay me what I'm worth. That's what self-reliant high achievers do. And obviously, I go in extensive detail on that in my second book, Mastering Yourself. So I'd highly recommend you guys go to understandrelationships.com, subscribe to the email newsletter, and get reading on those books so you can make more money and you can get a better job with better working conditions and better potential for growth and expansion. So if you've got a challenge or maybe you want to do, you need some help, maybe you're in a similar situation, you feel kind of stuck in your current job or where you're at and you'd like me to help you strategize on what to do to either move forward in that company and how to diplomatically go to your superiors and ask for what you're looking for. Go to understandingrelationships.com, click the products tab at the top of your screen, and book a coaching session with yours truly. Until next time, I will talk to you soon. (laughs) 